backing up your data. It's something all of us should do, but most of us rarely actually do it, whether we just don't have the correct solution for it, the space, whatever. Now, there are some good solutions out there for network attached storage to back your data up too. And Darren has found out a great way to do that, a great way to make a network attached storage. Network attached storage. A NAS. A NAS. If you will. Yes. What is it, Darren? Well, a NAS differs from other network attached storage, uh, I'm sorry, NAS differs from other backup solutions like a uh, external USB or FireWire hard drive or DAT tapes or CD-ROMs or just, you know, spare hard drives in your box because it's, the, the, the focus is the network aspect, okay? Okay. It's on a remote computer somewhere else attached to the network so it doesn't have to be physically attached to your machine. Right. And the beauty of that is it's the same thing that you would expect when it comes to, like, having a printer that has its own print server on the LAN, it becomes a network resource. So now, rather than just myself having access to this backup medium, I can give access to Wes, to Ali, and we can all keep our documents sane and secure, okay, if you yeah. will. And it's away from our machines in case something happens like me, where the hard drive dies, and I lost a lot. And the magic smoke just poof. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, now we're using FreeNAS, correct? Right. Now, what is FreeNAS? Well, FreeNAS is a network attached storage solution that's uh, based on the FreeBSD6 um, operating system, and it's licensed under the BSD license. And what's really neat about it is it's got a very small footprint, and it has some unique abilities. For example, it can be installed onto a USB key or onto a compact flash card or even onto the drive that you'll be using for storage. It's also okay. got, um, it also has many services built in like uh, CIFS mm -hmm. for, you know, Windows and uh, Unix also has NFS and even FTP services. Nice. Now, could we access that FTP from the internet if we wanted to, or would that yeah, we could set that up, you know, with a router, some port forwarding, mm -hmm. you know, set up the uh, user lists and authentication, and you know, you could open it up so that you could back up from work to your home machine. You could even set the, one of these up, you know, off-site so that you would have a off-site backup. And, and I'd imagine it's features like these that really sets free NAS apart from the mm -hmm. other solutions. Exactly. Uh, one of the other uh, network attached. Uh, network N NAS. I, I can't speak. <laughs> I'm on too many <laughs> painkillers. Um, the uh, one of the things that's really um, sets this apart from one of the others that I was using before was um, was NAS Lite. And NAS Lite's really neat, but it's not a free solution. Whereas this is, it's free, it's right. open source, and it's, the small footprint allows you to little do some nifty stuff with it. Okay, so now that we've gotten a, a pretty good idea of you know what we're working with. Now, what goes into the box that is our actual network attached storage? Well, that's the beauty. You don't need a uh, very sophisticated machine whatsoever. Um, the minimum system requirements, excuse me, are something with 96 megabytes of RAM. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you need a network interface. Of course. And a, C a bootable CD-ROM drive to install the to software. To actually burn the ISO. Right. In our case, we're just using our spare box that we've got sitting around the lab. It's a Athlon XP 2200 with a uh, with 256 megs of RAM. We've got a CDRW, and in our case, we popped in a nice 320 gigabyte Seagate drive that we got inexpensively online, and I think it was even under about $100. Mm. So for 300, you know, that's 30-something uh, that's, that's cents yeah, a it's gig. a good deal. Now, didn't, isn't that one of those like, cool perpendicular drives? Right, it's the perpendicular drive technology. In fact, I believe that um, that was recently featured on Lab Rats and mm. DLTV as well. So cool. Good stuff. Cool. Okay, and so that's the bit. And so, Long story short, you need a basic box. Right. This was you just, just our need spare, a bare bones. This was our spare machine, and then we spent about uh, another $110 uh, to $120 on parts. The other part that we picked up just for this mm -hmm. was this really nifty compact flash to IDE adapter. Now, this is a 32 megabyte compact flash drive that I had, um, or card that I had that came with my digital camera. I love when you get those nice, huge megapixel digital cameras. And, and they give you a 32, you. yeah. Yeah. So I decided to give it some new life. And uh, using the compact flash to IDE, ad IDE adapter, the machine reads this as a regular hard drive. OK. And uh, this way, there are new moving parts. It's got lower power requirements. And in theory, it should have a much longer lifespan. Exactly. OK. That's a really, really neat solution. OK, so we've got all our parts together. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So what do we do about setting up FreeNAS? Okay, so to set up FreeNAS, first you need to go over to freenas.org, download the latest ISO, and burn that to a CD. It's a really small ISO. Uh, take that CD, pop it in your machine that you've designated as your new network attached storage box, and when you boot off of that CD, you'll be given a screen similar to this that will give you the installation options. Now, I believe it's, it's um, option number seven will uh, start the setup procedure mm -hmm. to install it on your compact flash card on a uh, hard USB, drive or the USB, USB key. key or the hard drive. Right. right, And then from there, it's a pretty simple procedure of just following the on-screen directions. Next, 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 finish. Uh, well, the Unix or, world of next, 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 yeah, finish. Yeah, the equivalent thereof. And then once that's done, you'll pop out the CD, reboot. It'll boot off of your installation medium, in mm -hmm. our case, the compact flash drive. And we end up on this particular and we, console screen. We end up with the same exact console screen. It's, it's where you get all the work done. And the next step is to set up your network interface. And uh, that's option number one. And that's where you uh, assign it what network card you're using and whether that's ETH0 or what. It'll actually mm -hmm. auto detect those and give okay. you a good list of so what's it available. makes life easier. And then from there, I, I, guess, I guess we go to number two, which is set up LAN IP address, exactly. which is we give it a static IP address that will all, that machine will always have. Right, and we've given ours 192.168.1.66, so okay. that's the IP address we will use to administrate it and to uh, access it over the network for dumping our files. Okay, so now that it sees its network interface and we've given it an IP address on the network, mm -hmm. now where do we go? Well, we can run option number six, which is to ping a host to make sure that our, IP, our interface is working. And once that's all good and done, mm -hmm. we can just unplug the keyboard, we can unplug the monitor, we can throw this in the closet or stick it next to our cable modem and our router and all that other fun blinky lights. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'll just become like a permanent fixture in our LAN. Okay, so it just sits there and hums. Where do we actually access its functionality from? Your, your computer? Once you've got it hooked up, you don't really have an S yet. You've got a NAS server running, but the hard drive isn't uh, formatted or okay. added. So what we need to do is log into our uh, free NAS web interface. And in our case, that's over here in Firefox. We head over to 192.168.1.66. We'll be prompted for username and password. And the default for that is admin for the username and free NAS for the password. And once we're into here, we'll go under uh, disks. We'll go to management. And from here, we can add a disk. And then once we've got our disk added, we can go and format our disk. Mm -hmm. And that will format it in, um, I, I believe we formatted this uh, with, uh, what is it, um, ext3, OK, is the okay. file system that w this drive has been formatted in. And if I head over here to the status page, I can see that uh, I've got, you know, I can see the memory usage, and I can see drives and everything and the hardware that this is running on and once we have our drive added to mm -hmm. our NAS we can then start using it but we need to enable some services so that we can see it over the network. Yeah because now it's been formatted with a Unix type operating system and we're running Windows computers mm -hmm. so now do we have to use some kind of like Samba or something like that yeah, so yeah, we can put exactly. files on there? We head over to and this is the easiest part we just click on CIFS and then we just click enable Okay, okay, we give it a NetBIOS name. That NetBIOS name, FreeNAS, if we pull up start and run and go to backslash backslash FreeNAS, we'll pull up our NAS All one. Right. That's our drive that we've formatted and uh, added to the, the, um, the network touch storage system. And if we go in here, we, you know, we've got our uh, Hack5 Masters. We've got you know, okay. episode files backed up. So there's so. everything backed up. Okay, so now... FreeNAS is up and running. We have access to it over the network. So we have a place to back up to. Mm -hmm. But the worst part about backing up is remembering to do so. Right. And that is um, where the automation process comes in. And if you're on a, a Windows environment, one of the best ways to do that is with a couple of scripts. And my favorite command, the at command, to schedule it. Windows cron. Yes. And um, you know why reinvent the wheel when one of our own community members uh, who goes by the name of Go Intern has made an awesome tutorial on the Hack5 Wiki that has a great batch file and walks you through the, the steps involved in setting that up so that you can specify directories that you want to be backed up and those will you know you can run that nightly so that it only backs up what's changed mm -hmm. and uh, you know I could walk you through the whole thing but he's done a, an even better job than I could of explaining that on okay, the Hack5 Wiki on the Hack.5 Wiki so 
now we've got the automation scripts available. We've got FreeNAS up and running, so we we're set. We're set, and you know, if we wanted to go even you know many steps further, you can integrate this with Active Directory, mm. with Radius. You can uh, set up a software RAID. You can do so many amazing things with this piece of software. So I really recommend you go and check it out because backing up is something we all need to do, and this is the perfect solution if you're in a you know network environment where you want to share it among multiple people. So uh, if people want to find out even more about FreeNAS, I'd assume they go to the website. Go to the website uh, freenas.org or head over to our article on that, and that'll be on the Hack Five Wiki under the show notes. Okay, so thank you so much. That is freaking awesome. I'm glad we have that running here in the Hack Five Studios now. So let's head over to Allie and see what's coming up next in the show. Yeah.